But first, breaking news, a shooting at a Martin's supermarket in Elkhart. Dispatchers say an active shooter opened fire at the store in the 3900 block of East Bristol at Cobblestone Road. That's northeast of downtown Elkhart and north of the river. New Center 16's Barbara Harrington is live at the scene where all this unfolded less than an hour ago. Barbara, what is the very latest? Well, Terry and a member of the Elkhart Fire Department told me the situation is under control at this time. I did just speak with a gentleman whose mother was inside at the time this, this all went down. She called her son and said that she heard several shots fired. She did not see if anyone was hit or injured. We also are still waiting to hear if there are any victims in this case. Now that man says his mother was obviously very afraid, but once police got this situation under control, they did evacuate everyone, take them outside of that dangerous situation brought them to the parking lot where they start started some questioning and I'm now told that they will be taken over to the Elkhart Police Department for further questioning tonight and right now I'm joined by Tony whose mother was working inside when this happened tonight Tony first of all your mother's okay how are you feeling uh, now that I know she's safe I'm feeling a lot better than, than I was before tell me what she told you when she called you tonight about this uh, when she called me, uh, obviously she was upset, and I asked her what was going on. She said she heard a, uh, well, that she, she was told that there was a shooting inside uh, Martins, and then uh, they slowly uh, evacuated Martins, and, and she was outside, and she said she was safe at the time. She did not know of anyone being injured in there? No, she didn't say anything about someone being injured. She just said that may, that she heard that someone was shot. I don't know if that was true or not. How does it make you feel that someone would bring a gun in here? You told me earlier it makes you angry. Yeah, it does make me angry. I mean, you're going to a grocery store just to get food and, and to live, and, and you're, you're not safe. Well, thank you so much, Tony. We're so glad that your mother is okay tonight. And we've seen several other people. One man, very teary eyed, came up to me and said, Police tell me my son is okay tonight. So, some positive uh, news at the end of this horrific situation. All those witnesses that, that they brought in who were inside the store and around have actually been released from their police department at this time. So, now it's the job of the investigators to piece all that information and figure out what happened. But as you can see, officers still on the scene here as they piece together what happened. Now, witnesses say the gunman entered the south side of the store and started shooting in the produce section around 10 p.m. Police believe it was a single shooter. He is dead. Police shot and killed a gunman described as a white man in his late teens, early 20s, who lives in the area. Now, police found both a knife and a large caliber semi-automatic handgun in the store. Now, several rounds were exchanged between the officer and the government gunman. You asked about those witnesses or those victims. Two women were those victims. They tell us that one was an employee in the late teens, early 20s, and a customer in her 40s. Um, police tell us that the victims were found about 10 to 12 aisles apart. So that just shows you how big this crime scene is and how much space they have to work with to figure out what happened and collect all of that evidence. Now, the relationship between the two victims and the shooter at this time is unknown. What a horrifying situation. It was very scary. We had just finished up our night at, at a little bit before 10 and we were put on lockdown by the police department. I had was essentially holding 20 plus people hostage within my building. I don't know what would cause you to take, you know, come into a grocery store and start shooting. You know, it was 10 o'clock at night. It wasn't, uh, luckily it wasn't, you know, six o'clock in the, in the evening where more people might be in there. You drove up here to see what was going on, why? Well, my mother works here. She's been here uh, about 12 years, and she personally knows one of the victims. Uh, she was actually just recently taken off night shift because she used to train her, and um, I just wanted to come up here and make sure everything was all right, see if she was able to return to work, because she's scared for her life. How do you have that conversation with your mom, not only for you to think she could have been in this store, but to know that she has a personal tie to one of the victims? It was very emotional for me. I uh, freaked out last night when I first seen uh, on the news. I called her right away. I let her know, you know, just to wait for me when I wake up in the morning. I'll give her a call and see where things are at, and I'll go check it out, make sure she can return to work safely. If not, then I'll give her a call and let her know what's going on. I have reviewed the surveillance tapes from the uh, store. While they do include plenty of pictures, it was remarked more than once, uh, no audios included, so they don't 
they can see actually the gunman threatening some of the store employees. They don't know exactly what he said, exact nature of those threats. The video does apparently show uh, Bear entering the store about a half hour before he ever fired a shot. Perhaps he used some of that extra time uh, to have some second thoughts. The video shows him walking around the aisles and occasionally texting and talking on his cell phone. We're everywhere. I wouldn't say that it was well planned, but it was obviously thought out. Um, he took his time, you know, I, I, I think he, he might have been hesitant, but he was at the store and whether he was, you know, watching people or picking out people, we'll never know. No, we have not determined a motive. Um, as I mentioned before, things have kind of swung back and forth. Um, as I last reported, we didn't believe that there was any connection between the shooter and um, one of the female victims. However, some information has now come in from other parts of the state that that might not be true. There might be some relationship. Because there's not a police officer in this building that wouldn't give his life to have stopped what happened last night to those two innocent victims. We cannot, we cannot lose sight of the commitment of folks dressed like me all around us today. 22-year-old Sean Bear of Elkhart. They were saying that he was a regular at this place. He lived with his folks uh, in a near neighborhood nearby here. Uh, Tricia Hart has been uh, doing some digging today, and Tricia, uh, you uncovered some fairly disturbing stuff uh, about Mr. Bear's past. That's right, Terry, and when you look at his criminal record besides his personal Facebook page, he has a handful of convictions, some for drugs, some for theft, and a couple of other criminal warrants out there. In 2009, in fact, he was arrested for possession of an illegal substance. Then in 2010, he was sentenced to jail for stealing from the Martin supermarket, not this location, but the one over on Jackson Boulevard in Elkhart. According to the truth, they confirmed that records ordered Bear to obtain an addiction assessment after that arrest and an order of commitment at Oaklawn Psychiatric Center. Oaklawn is located down in Goshen. Now, Bear's Facebook page shows images and quotes from infamous serial killers. His family, I went to ask them to get a little bit more information about Bear. They declined to comment, saying this is a personal matter. We have been to his house. Um, the subject was living with his parents. Uh, we had a consent to search of the house. Um, some items of evidentiary value were recovered from the house and uh, have been processed. What's your reaction? What did his parents say? Um, it's like any parent. I mean, you don't, um, you don't ever want to think it of your own child being involved with something like that. So, uh, you know, the initial shock of obviously somebody knocking on your door and telling you that your son's dead. Crystal Dykes, 20 years old. She was a stalker at the store. She was the first victim of Bear and Rochelle Gottfried, 44 years old. She was a customer there. She was simply checking out when it appears Bear shot her dead. And we found out uh, that she is a mother and that her son, Joe, plays basketball for IUSB, was in Illinois last night. Had, he had a game there and she was killed while he was out of state. And of course, our uh, thoughts and prayers are with uh, the Godfrey family as well as the Dykes family. And even though they were no longer together, he had nothing but high praise for her and he's just devastated. Exactly. I spoke to Kyle Barnett, who's a Mishawaka man, who said that the two dated for about two years on and off and at one point lived together, so he knew her pretty well. He said that she had just started working at this Martins behind me. They'd actually had a falling out recently, so they weren't speaking and he just keeps playing that last conversation over and over in his mind, um, wishing that he could have said things differently. And the man, he says that 20-year-old Crystal Dykes had attended Elkhart Central, the same high school that shooter Sean Bear attended. He said she was a lover of music, an avid concert grower, and a supporter of many local bands. Police say she was the first to die at the hands of last night's shooter. Her friends and family are still learning to cope with the news. At 3 o'clock this morning, um, my brother called me. I was asleep. Crystal was shot. And uh, at that point, it was just kind of, I didn't really know what to feel. She was beautiful, uh, kind hearted. She loved children. Um, she was adamant about children. One thing we do know blood was spilled in the least likely of places, a neighborhood Martin's. As I said last night, Mo, if it can happen at Martin's, it can happen anywhere. So hold your loved ones tonight and be grateful you still have them. And pray for everyone 
in the city with a heart tonight. Yeah, a really tough one, Terry. And